We are back in session. We are on item 10B at this time, Crabtree Creek Nature Park Design Update. I'd like to recognize Jerry Allen, our Parks, Recreation and Cultural Resources Director to facilitate our discussion. Mr. Allen. Good evening, everyone. It's uh, great to see you all again. I'm, it's, it's been quite a while, so I'm glad we we're able to get back together. Um, tonight's presentation is something we've been looking forward to for a while, and that is an update on the design process for Crabtree Creek Nature Park. Uh, as you all know, we uh, signed a contract with CLH Design last fall to do this design work and they were able to get started over the winter. Um, our project manager, Lauren Dixon, is with us tonight from CLH to also go over uh, how they've been progressing on the project and answer questions uh, and share some information with you. So uh, where we'd like to start is a little bit of background information just to uh, refresh everyone's memory. Um, Here we go. Sorry, it took just a second to get it started. Um, the property in question, uh, town acquired in 1999. Um, you know, when we acquired the property initially, we looked at it with the hope of being able to program it for some mix of uses, some uh, active uses as well as passive. Obviously, as we went through um, our investigation of the site back in 2001, uh, we learned about flood easements and more information about that, and so the theme of the park changed to more of a nature park. At that time, we'd hoped for a staff nature center, uh, shelters, playgrounds, parking lots to support that use. Um, but over time, it, through several master plan updates and capital improvement plan updates, you know that original concept has evolved and changed slightly. And so uh, what we had adopted in the 2018 Parks and Recreation Master Plan no longer had a staffed facility in it. It was more of a passive self-led type uh, program. So the 2018 master plan also included a citizen survey and analysis of our existing facilities. And out of that work came a priority investment rating that was adopted as part of our master plan. And what that does is help lead us and guide us in what facilities that we need to be looking for to help serve our community. So in that rating, uh, Nature Parks came in at number two of a most needed facility. It was actually tied with greenways, which you know are similar, uh, only behind an indoor pool. And council chose to move ahead, obviously, as you know, with the uh, indoor pool at Morrisville Aquatic and Fitness Center. And so staff following the master plan requested funding last year to start design of the Crabtree Creek Nature Park. Um, and CLH was brought on under contract in the fall to start that process. So uh, they've done a lot of great work and Lauren will tell you more about that in a moment. Um, and they've reached what they call conceptual levels for the design and we want to update council on that and get feedback from you. So um, does anyone first have any questions on any of the background before we move into the project design and I'll turn it over to Lauren. Okay. Hearing none, then uh, Lauren will let you take over and you can go through the project design portion. Okay. Well, can everybody hear me all right? Yes. Okay, excellent. Well, good evening. I'm really excited to be able to present this project to you. Um, my name is Lauren Dixon. I am a landscape architect with CLH Design. Uh, we are the lead consultant, as Jerry said, for this project. We have other sub consultants with us and we have been tasked with furthering this design of this park um, and going all the way through construction documents and permits. So tonight I'm going to kind of go through a brief introduction of the site. I know that you guys have seen these slides, so I don't want to spend too much time reading bullet points to you that you already know, but I would like to kind of go over them a little bit more in depth. And I'll go through what the park program is, present the site analysis and where we are with conceptual design. I'll take a pause at the end to um, answer questions if you've got them. Um, so this project, um, let me see if it'll let me advance here. Is two parcels of property. The first parcel is probably what you know is the existing kind of Crabtree Creek Nature Park. It's 33.75 acres and the second parcel is 3.15 acres. The majority of the 33.75 acre parcel is located within the flood easement that restricts development basically to an elevation um, to handle the floodwaters from the lake. So the 3.15 acre parcel is not within that flood easement. 
the existing site has a youth cricket field, parking lot with about 32 parking spaces, and an existing greenway connector trail that goes through it. So this is an aerial showing the existing park site. You can see this open cleared space that I'm pointing at with the mouse here is where those cricket fields are. This small piece right here is the existing parking lot. This is the parcel, the three point, um, the, about that three acre parcel that is not within the flood easement. Um, it's not letting me use my keyboard, so I apologize if it's a little slow. That's a zoom in showing kind of where that existing greenway trail kind of comes in and connects up to the parking lot and up to the street out at Keybridge Drive. The approved 2018 concept plan included the amenities that you see, um, and these, this is the approved program and what we have based our conceptual design on. So a park restroom shelter facility, play lawn, an inclusive playground. It's got two different types of gardens, sensory garden and demonstration garden, stormwater control measure, trails, interpretive and educational signage, um, and then realigning that existing greenway connection. So this is that approved uh, master plan that and so you can see all of those key elements and kind of where they were located within that master plan. And our team's been tasked with further developing this. So we have taken a look at uh, sustainability further as we've gone through this process. These are design elements that are within the project now. So the building orientation has been um, located on an east-west axis for the best daylighting and shading. We're looking at recyclable, recycled and renewable materials as we further detail these plans. Looking at things like what the coatings um, and paints are, low flow plumbing fixtures, um, instantaneous hot water heaters. Sensors are very helpful in these park programs from daylight sensors to motion sensors. Um, and then in the landscape, we're talking about water-wise landscaping as well as native plant material. We've also looked at this site from a tree preservation uh, perspective. Our survey that we've had performed included a tree survey that identified, um, I think everything three inches and up um, on this site. And uh, so we've looked at the trail routing to kind of avoid the larger trees that are on this site and um, looking at doing the parking areas and higher impact development on the areas that are existing cleared space or are more successional forest. So that the concept design that I'll show to you a little bit later preserves about 90% or so of that existing wooded area on site. Um, most of the trees that are being removed are really for the higher impact, so it'll be for the building and the playground. And again, like I said, that's a successional forest, so that means it's usually mostly pines with smaller hardwoods and some understory trees. We've also looked at uh, solar panels on this site. Park facilities typically have minimal electric demand, particularly if you do daylighting, you can naturally light one of these facilities without having to use electricity very frequently. So they may not be, um, you know, the greatest efficiency, but it's definitely something that we're looking into as we further detail the plans. The building, I'm going to kind of jump into the, the building program and size. It's about 40 by 120. Uh, the building design does have space for educational displays. This is a nature park, but we don't have a nature center per se as a part of this building structure. So our design has really looked at how can we bring those educational elements outside and into the landscape and kind of including space for uh, signage and um, interpretation on the building and throughout the site. There's about 800 square feet of restroom, 1,625 square feet or so of shelter. The remaining space within the building um, is for the chase and electrical and mechanical and things like that. The building has been designed with four individual restrooms. They are accessed from each side of the building, and I can point that out when I pull up the master plan and show you kind of how that flow works. Um, and all of those restrooms are accessible. We've really taken the idea of inclusivity as far as we can with this, this design. So we're also actually looking at going above and beyond the minimum accessible requirements, um, trying to think about user groups that maybe need more than just what that minimum requirement is. So if you have a child that's larger or um, you have equipment that you need to bring into a restroom with you, looking at putting a built-in bench that provides a sturdier changing option or place to set um, belongings or for 
family member to sit. We've enlarged two of the restroom spaces just to provide more room if someone needs to be in one of those restrooms and have someone um, help them so that they've got more room to maneuver. But all of them are sized to meet the minimum accessibility requirements with added space for fold down changing tables. Um, going on to the next to two. Hang on a second. OK, so this is the concept that you'll see here. So the building has restrooms that can be accessed from both. The playground is located on this side of the building with the open kind of lawn on this side, and there are two restrooms accessed on either side of that building. Um, and then there's the space for the picnic tables. Um, and now I'm going to jump into kind of some of the site analysis on this project. So this site, um, the initial concept plan um, had an area that was noted for wetlands, but when we got our environmental scientists out on site and our surveyor out on site, there's a lot more wetlands on this site than I think was originally known. So what you see in that dark green on your uh, screen is all wetlands, existing wetlands on site. Those have been um, already reviewed by the Army Corps of Engineers and they are determined to be wetlands. The dark blue dashed line that you see is the floodway on site and that hatch is showing all the area on this site that is within that floodway. So the floodway is an area that the creek basically uses to handle that kind of first flash flood um, event. So that's an area that we've really kept um, development out of. Um, and then the yellow that you see are stream buffers. So other um, the the back property line is the Crabtree Creek, but you can see we also have stream buffers interior to the site and one that traverses the site. This next plan is showing you where there are existing utilities. The there is an existing gas line and an existing sewer line that parallel each other and kind of run along where the Crabtree Creek is. There is also a uh, existing sewer line that traverses the site perpendicular to the creek and we have a storm drainage easement that's uh, right off Key Bridge Avenue and basically a majority of the storm water from this adjacent development is coming through that storm water pipe that you see there. And this is a compilation of kind of showing what the developable barrier developable area is. It kind of takes all of those factors into account. You can still see where that dashed blue line is for the floodway, where the um, utilities are located, the streams, but this purple color that you see is kind of what you're left with on this site that would be considered developable. From, you can do trails outside of that, so what I mean by developable is your buildings, your impervious surface, your playgrounds, those amenities. And this is the conceptual site rendering. The, the main goal in this whole project was looking at this as being the town's first nature park um, and kind of highlighting those educational opportunities. So um, you can see we've got the building located here on that smaller parcel, that about three acre parcel. The existing parking, and I will zoom in on this on the next slide. I'm gonna give you an overview right now on this slide. The existing parking lot remains and we've added to that. The uh, rest of the open lawn area becomes meadow. We have room for a stormwater control measure, which uh, we are proposing as a constructed wetland at this point. And then there is a trail that leads off into where the natural wetlands are with a boardwalk loop. You can see that a little bit better here on the zoom in. You can see how the trail comes out here. Here's where this boardwalk loop is. Um, the constructed wetland as you come back in. The, the main kind of purpose of the and flow of this site is the building has been designed to kind of capture rainwater and channel it to this side of the building. We're looking at a rain garden and a series of grain gardens to capture that rainwater and really provide educational opportunities for people to highlight that and understand that water. It will flow into this rain garden, which will then be piped into a garden that's the center of the parking lot, and then that will be piped into the uh, constructed wetland. We think it's a really kind of a great juxtaposition between a constructed wetland and a natural wetland and talking about how we use these natural systems to treat our stormwater. Um, and to kind of get the impurities out of that. The playground's located out towards a key bridge. It's not right at the street, but it's on that side of the building. 
there would be restrooms that could be accessed from that side. And then the multi-purpose lawn is on the other side with the greenway kind of being realigned so that it comes around the corner and pulls it away from the parking lot and out to Key Bridge. You can see this all a little bit further and um, this zoom in here. This is showing uh, again that aerial that we showed earlier to walk you through kind of where these elements would be. So you can see this existing parking. If you can imagine, we've added on another bay of parking that's back in this area. Then the rest of this open field as it exists now, we're proposing to be turned into meadow. Um, again, that brings out an educational opportunity about pollinators um, that can tie in with uh, the native plants that we would also use within the constructed wetland. The building is being placed in this uh, general vicinity here. It kind of lines up with that center um, rain garden piece that's in the parking lot. Playground being out towards Keybridge and the open lawn being at the back portion. And this kind of overlays those on top of each other so you can kind of see what what's happening on that existing site. Um, I did want to note, I'm going to back up one slide here. If you look at this aerial, you can kind of see this was actually flown in the winter. So you can see the the green trees that you're seeing are pine trees, whereas you can see the, the leaves aren't on the hardwood trees. So most of this area really is more successional forest than the rest of the site. 